Hey, what's going on? I'm back in Rhode Island. I was hoping to do a Theater Weirdos reunion, but I couldn't get in touch with little R.A. Bartlett. So it's just gonna be me today. Wait a minute. What are you doing over there? Uh, I, I was waiting for you. Like, uh, I've been here for, for a while. Like, where? He's been waiting this whole time? Yeah. I appreciate your loyalty. Heck yeah. Let's go see the movie called The Menu. Yeah. I don't know much about this film. I know that it's produced by, uh, what, what they're, uh, it's pretty, it's produced by, by Will men. Ferrell and Adam McKay. They're, yes. Yes. That's it. But, uh, I don't, their last collaboration cause they're not friends anymore. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think it's like a wacky comedy though. I think it's more of like a dark comedy, but besides that, I don't know anything about it. There's a Christmas tree in the corner there, and I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season. It's kind of sad that Lincoln Mall doesn't really have the uh, Santa and the decked out nutcrackers anymore. Oh, uh, you like nutcrackers, don't you? Is, is, that, is that an entendre? I don't know if you want it to be. I don't want it to be. Okay, then it's not. You like just regular nutcrackers, though? Yeah, I like the little Imperial Germany regalia. Okay, very good. Okay, so we actually saw a couple of film strips. The first one was The Menu, and to review a movie called The Menu, or any movie really, if you're an online reviewer, or even back in the print days, you have to have a pun. So do you have any puns on The Menu? Like, ooh, it's served up uh, lots of suspense and laughs. Right. Uh, there was a lot of salt thrown around at the rich in the movie. Yeah. It was a very salty movie. It was, so, Going in, I said it would be a dark comedy, uh -huh. and like it kind of was, but not really. And it kind of was mainly a uh, like suspense thriller, but not really. It was kind of just a movie that kind of you couldn't really define. Although it did have very similar, uh, you know, themes to other movies I've seen before. Basically, like, uh, it's a group of people, like, ordering at this restaurant that's on an island, and it's very exclusive and expensive. And, uh, slight spoilers, you find out that, like, the people at the restaurant all kind of have, like, a checkered past of sorts, which has been done a ton. But I can't really name a specific example off the top of my head. Uh, right, it usually happens like in a lot of murder mysteries. Yeah, and um, also it's very, very, it's very common in theater. Okay, okay. Uh, I would say that like I enjoyed the movie. It wasn't like my favorite movie or anything. Uh, there was a lot of like uh, things where I thought there was going to be major plot holes, but it did a good job of wrapping all those up, I feel. And it did have a really cool ending. I'm kind of more into movies that are just like grounded in reality. Nothing happens in here like supernatural, but there are a lot of far-fetched things yeah, you happening. Yeah, you kind of have to take a lot of leap that characters would actually do this and Assume that uh, Ray Fon who Ray finds is, I think, really kind of perfect for being somebody who's both very funny and scary at the same time. Because uh -huh. he can be very funny in movies, but he's also good at playing psychos. Uh, I think the funniest part were the title cards. Because uh, it, it introduces each of the courses uh, for the meal throughout the evening. And at first they're pretty serious and they get more and more comical and off track. Uh -huh. And then they, they start to get really funny. I feel I didn't explain the plot very well, so walk us through it. So there is this uh, island. Yeah, as you, there's this island that has uh, a, it's a sort of tourist attraction. People go to a restaurant. Only twelve people are allowed, or something, and you you have to uh, be in groups. Uh -huh. And you know, uh, the, it's the head chef, and he's super famous, and everything on the island is made locally. Like, all the food is grown, uh -huh. the animals, uh, fi fish, everything is sort of super local. And as people are eating, and the dishes become very, very conceptual, and he, uh, the chef starts talking about his past. And We're going to get into spoilers here, right. I'm sure. Uh, continue. Uh, and then it uh, then turns out one of his sous chef, one of the people underneath him, kills himself be, uh, basically to say that the life of being a chef, of being a cook, especially for rich, spoiled people, is extremely taxing psychologically. Uh -huh. 
And then it turns out his entire plan was he's going to get revenge on all these rich assholes who may or may not have ruined his life. Or at least they're dodging some way or another. And the entire staff is willing to go along with it. I don't know if because they agree with him or he's... <laughs> sort of drug the, uh, drag them into this cult-like view of things? Yes, I, that's like the far-fetched part. Like, uh, what I, when I said I thought there was going to be plot holes, I was thinking, like, why would anyone, like, go to this restaurant? But then it turns out, like, the restaurant was very successful for a long time, and then this night, the guy, like, decides to, like, uh, you know, get his revenge or whatever. And uh, also, yes, why was the, the crew so devout to this guy? That kind of was a little far-fetched. I, yeah, I th I, like I said, I, th I mean, yes, the movie is not, is not, it's a very hyper-realistic kind of movie. Uh -huh. But I do think part of, part of it is that, yeah, they kind of agree, because like, they even had, in the movie, one of the chefs under him, she said she came up with the whole idea uh -huh. and everyone else went along with it. But I also think part of it is that he, for a long time, has indoctrinated his staff into following him to anywhere. This Santa, he's going to go see a film. Which do you think he's going to see? Oh, he's probably going to see Violent Night. Right, is he going to point out the inaccuracies? Yeah. <laughs> Santa enjoys a flick. Do they charge them? Do you think it's a senior citizen discount? I think Santa gets in free at the movies. I guess I mean, because I just I want to calculate, because Santa's, you know, what, a thousand years old? Mm -hmm. So how many uh, senior citizen discount, like, percentages does that take? Or, like, you know, with Santa, it's like, okay, you don't get the discount until you're 700. Is that what no, you mean? <laughs> no, no, because because I because I think of this. I think he's grandfathered in, Ooh. fathered Christmas in. I don't know. Uh, you were very uh, happy to <laughs> drop that punchline that really didn't hit very hard. But that's okay. That happens to me all the time. Uh, so yes. So this guy. So he was my favorite part of the movie. This guy right here. Yeah, he's always good in stuff. He's like kind of a secret weapon in a lot of movies. What else has he been in? Uh, Mad Max: Fury Road. Oh, okay. Uh, he was in The Favorite. Um, okay, I didn't like that movie, but... Do you remember uh, in the... Like, when I said earlier, I want things to be grounded in reality, that one is just bonkers, uh, crazy. So I'm not a big fan of The, the Favorite. Uh, he's also like the beast in the X-Men. That's not me in the picture. Uh, That's not me. That's somebody else. Here, we were saying that uh, you were going to go see that movie. I appreciate that. Thank There's you, Santa. No problem. Enjoy the rest of the year. Thank you. Hmm. So yes, as crazy things are going on, uh, everyone is freaking out, but this guy like is so like obsessed with this uh, chef. He like uh, hangs on his like every word. Uh, and yeah, that's the most comical part of the movie. So I do recommend the menu. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be on my top 10 list, which we do plan on making a top 10 movies of 2022, as far as uh, we're concerned. We didn't see every movie or anything. So would you recommend the menu? Yeah, no, I think it's a very unique and one of a kind. I think we should check stuff out like that, give that a chance. Ah, but we see unique ones. Yeah, but I'm- Sometimes, but, sometimes but it's telling, just- But uh, we're telling our audience to check out, not just the franchise stuff. Just okay, okay. So we both went to see a second movie each. I wanted to see Top Gun, and I was so surprised that it's still in the theaters like six months after it came out. I figured, you know, that's the perfect sign. I should see it. You had already seen it, so you went to see Violent Night. Right. But I actually saw this uh, a few weeks back, or maybe last week, and I enjoyed uh, Violent Night. I, I think that was very enjoyable. At the beginning, I thought it was going to kind of be like, you know, a generic, like, uh, Bad Santa type movie. Not that Bad Santa is that generic, but, you know, you've seen it before. Ooh, Santa's supposed to be nice, but get this, he's not nice. Whoa, what, whoa. Uh, and it was a little bit like that at first, but then I thought like it uh, like grew into a movie like with a lot of heart. Right, I think, uh, so I definitely think Santa, David Harbour as Santa and the little girl were really good and had a lot of chemistry together. Mm -hmm. Totally agree with that. Uh, which is good because some of the other actors in it were a little um, arch. 
Uh -huh. little like kind of almost fake. -ish. What's funny is John Leguizamo is in this movie, and yeah. he's also in the menu. Yeah. Did you ever think you'd get like two movies with John Leguizamo in them at the theaters at the same time? Uh, not since 2002. Okay, what was that? Although that was just like a big year for him. Okay. Uh, nice. Uh, and would you recommend that one? You would? Uh, I would. It's, uh, it's, so it's definitely not the most original movie. It creeps uh -huh. a lot from uh, Die Hard, Die Hard 2 especially, Home Alone, which to be fair, yeah, it, it but... attributes sources. Uh, also, the, it kind of reminded me of The Northman, which I don't know if you saw that. I don't think so. It's about, uh, it's about a Viking, and there's a battle in a volcano at the end. And So while watching this, I'm like, oh man, I'm, the guy who made The Northman must be so mad at this movie. Okay, alright. Uh, also, um, uh, uh, can I spoil Santa's backstory a little bit in this? Uh, spoilers, people know there's spoilers. So skip ahead if you don't want Santa's backstory. Uh, Yes, go ahead. So, yeah, it, it's revealed that Santa was a Viking uh -huh. hundreds of years ago, uh -huh. uh, which is really funny because they're, they're not the first people to come up with this idea. Uh, there was some kind of Hallmark type movie with uh, Jeff Bridges' uh, brother, Bo, Bo Bridges, yeah. the other Baker boy, uh, uh, as a Viking who became Santa as sort of a repen repentance or something, sort of like a. What's that movie called? I, I really forget. It's like, it was a okay. TV movie. Okay, maybe someone out there knows and can drop that in the comments. Uh, so yeah, and I saw Top Gun Maverick. And once again, that's not like the type of movie that I love, like big blockbusters. But for a big blockbuster, like it was really well done, really uh, like good looking, like, uh, you know, jet fighter pilot stuff. And uh, yeah, and I enjoyed myself. A problem I had with it a little bit is I didn't know who the enemy was or like what country they were supposed to be in. Well, I thought it was the United States the whole time. And maybe they were in the United States and then went like, you know, offshore to go fight the bad guys. But All right. they didn't really explain that. Well, yeah, that's kind of the point because it's like they, uh, they, especially Tom Cruise, kind of wanted to have it both ways where you kind of had the sort of rah-rah patriotism. Uh -huh but not actually hating a person, hating uh -huh. another country. He doesn't yeah. want to do that exactly. Yeah. So the, yeah, that, the, the, that, that was totally by design. Nice. Uh, just, uh, and, and also because it'll make great military propaganda if you don't, if you can switch the wars around. Uh -huh. So yeah, I did see Top Gun Maverick and yeah. like we all agree that Jennifer Connelly is an attractive woman and has been all her life. Uh, sure. But I think, I don't know, in this one, she was like looking extra, I don't know, sparkly or something? Uh, yes, especially for her, uh, you know, she's not as young as she used to be, but it's definitely still an attractive woman. Right, and, I, and, I, and I'm, uh, so I'm just wondering, like, that uh, for, like, she was holding back this for the past 20 years or something, like in A Beautiful Mind and Hulk, where she's pretty, but not mind-blowing. I'm just wondering if she's just like, her whole life has been wearing a Jennifer Connelly mask uh, of herself because she doesn't want us all to hate her own faces. Oh, okay. And well, like, that's well, nice of her. So, and then, but now like the world's coming to an end. So she's like, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just like, if people don't want to like find each other too ugly to mate, that's not my problem anymore. There's this movie Babylon, which you were saying looks just like uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but obviously probably won't be as good. Right. Yeah, because it's just, it's the, you know, it's a throwback to movie lots. It's got your Ben Affleck, it's got your uh, Margot Robbie's. Uh, not that, your Brad Pitt's. Uh-huh. Your Brad Pitt's, your Margot Robbie's. Is that her name? Yeah. I always thought it was uh, Robbie. I think you pronounce it Robbie. Okay. I don't know, she's Australian, but she plays a lot of Cindy Lauper types. So uh -huh. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce what her name anymore. Uh-huh. Okay, all right. So yeah, that just about does it for this episode of Theater Weirdos. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time around.